We are back on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio. News Talk, 1180 for the best in Saturday talk radio on 1230 KGEO, 1410 KERI, 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and now on the Internet on knutmedium.com. You know, Barry, uh, continuing on my thought that Hillary was probably going to be the primary candidate for the Democrats, uh, with the with the problems between the Republican Party and the Tea Party, are we going to be able to come together to put up a decent candidate? Well, sure. I don't think we're going to have any problem. Well, what problems are you talking about? Well, There's no can't... problems between the uh, Tea Party and the Republican Party. Well, the Republican Party doesn't support the Tea Party, as far as I know. And we've got uh, Mr. Rowe out there campaigning against some great Tea Party candidates in the Midwest. Well, I think it's a lot to do about nothing, to be honest with you. If you, uh, the Tea Party and the, cons- and the conservatives and the libertarians and so-called conventional conservatives, we all believe in the same thing. We believe in limited government, that, uh, that we have too much government today, that the taxes are too high, and there's too much regulation. All, and we believe in a strong defense. The B- Republican Party is united on our core values. Well, then they need to get out and vote. Well, sure. That's what elections are about. Yeah. And the Republican Party traditionally has done very well in getting their, their people out. See, the Tea Party came about because in 2010 because uh, they were just sick and tired of the way the the country was going and they they were the tea party was a loose association of people with no organization to speak of and that loose organization still exists today there's libertarians in the tea party there are traditional conservatives there are uh, 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 social conservatives in the in the tea party there's all kinds of people who call themselves tea party so to to label the or to cut up the Republican Party into groups, I think is a, is is wrong, and I and I, I don't subscribe to it. And uh, if Carl Rowe uh, wants to campaign against certain Republicans, that's fine. I mean, I, I we have a primary for governor here in Arizona. There's eight people running, eight Republicans running. I support one of those, but that happens in the Republican Party and the Democrat Party when you have multiple candidates going for an office. So I, I don't subscribe to the fact that, this, that the party is splintered, and, uh, and that, you know, I don't subscribe to that. I think that's a lot of fooey that's, that's, uh, that's dreamt up by the press. Well, I'll just have to disagree with you on that personally. Well, you don't have to. Well, you I don't have, have to. I'm you just going to, that's all. If you like. <laughs> no, I'm going to disagree with you on this one, I think. Barry, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> that's but why I wasn't... You ought to go on back to sleep and then <laughs> come back and, and talk to us in ten minutes. Now, now you're finding out why I wasn't invited to the first meeting. <laughs> Barry, I'm enjoying this. I'm sitting back. You you go after Clay all you want for the next hour. <laughs> you know, the other issue that I had is, what what's your thoughts on this uh, California program where they take the top two vote-getters regarding which party it is? Well, I, I, I don't like that. I don't I either. I think what that does is eliminate any other party or any other candidates besides Republican and Democrat. And in many instances, it'll be probably... Uh, two Republicans running against each other, or two Democrats. I know. I think when you sp- split up the uh, party, uh, the uh, election into a kind of a the top two, you eliminate um, you eliminate the the uh, excitement that's generated from party politics, and everybody's kind of out on their own now. Oh, and I it, agree. It eliminates a lot of competition, that's for sure. See, we do agree on something. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will we stop here? We're, move, we're, we're moving forward, Barry. We're moving forward. <sighs> I like progress. <laughs> oh. Well, let me go. Let me go back to something I, w- I wanted to talk to you about that you and I talked about the other day. Uh, I, I know there's there's something going on now, and there was a conversation that I guess Rush Limbaugh was involved in, where some p- 
people, I think, in the Republican Party are saying, well, if we're not careful and we go down this libertarian road, and I think they're talking about Rand Paul, um, that we're going to get shellac like we did in 1964. I, I think the implication is that your dad wasn't conservative. I think he was the fa- father. Him and Bill Buckley were the fa- father of the modern conservative movement. Well, you know, there, some people look back and, and, and they fear... Uh, uh, another Goldwater defeat. That that was a time and place in history when s- certain uh, uh, conditions uh, were were uh, were existing at the time. The, today is a, is quite a bit different. And uh, Barry Goldwater really defined what the Republican Party stood for. In those days, it was pretty much controlled by the liberals uh, uh, from the East Coast, the Rockefellers, the uh, Scrantons, uh, Michigan Governor Romney. And uh, the conservatives took the party back or took it away from the liberal Eastern establishment. And under Goldwater and Buckley and later Ronald Reagan, they defined what the Republican Party stood for: limited government, less taxes, less regulations, personal ind- personal responsibility, a strong defense. Those core values still exist today, and uh, the circumstances at the time were that, in fact, uh, we had a the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and the vice president was running. Those. Those circumstances don't exist today, and so I don't fear any shellacking like it happened in 1964. If anything, we should praise the fact that Goldwater and Buckley and others stood up for principle and established that as the definition of the Republican Party. At least we stand for something, and that's something you can't say about the Democrats. Very true. We're having a conversation for the hour with former Congressman Barry Goldwater, Jr. You know, Barry, looking back at that time, uh, if if Kennedy hadn't have been assassinated, do you think he would have won in 1964, going head-to-head against your dad? Oh, I have no idea. I, I don't know. Yeah. We, we, had, we had Clint Hill on the show, you know, the Secret Service agent that... Uh, you know, jumped on the back of the limousine, you know, and, and tried to save President Kennedy when he was shot. Right. Uh, yeah, he's written a couple of books recently. We had him on the show, and, and, I, and I asked him a similar question. I said, do you think uh, President Kennedy would be as popular had he not been killed? And, and it was interesting. We were talking about a couple months before the assassination. Kennedy went to a seminar on, on Abraham Lincoln, and he asked that very question. He said, would Lincoln have been more popular uh, and would he have survived the political climate had he not been assassinated? And the lecturer said no. So do you think Kennedy would uh, not have the, the popularity that he has today had he not been assassinated? I think he was probably more popular today than he was then. Mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, but- he was right. He was just like Obama, like uh, Clinton previous. When you're in the thick of things, the atmosphere is a lot different. Uh, than many, many years later. Uh, we tend to forget the negatives and think about the positive things about people. And that, that, that includes the president. Well, you know, I served in the Army for a few years, and that's pretty much how I feel. I forget the negatives and try to only remember the positives. But I did get one wonderful award. I got the, uh, oh, I forgot what it was, but it had the pers- purple shaft in it. <laughs> I was in the Marines. I got that purple shaft quite often. Uh, Speaking of the military, and you and I touched on this last time, you know, Kennedy was was apparently trying to get us out of Vietnam before he he was assassinated. Do you think your dad would have done the same thing and kept us out of Southeast Asia had he become president? Well, I think it was Kennedy that got us into Vietnam. I mean, it started under Eisenhower, Mm -hmm. but Kennedy is the one that accelerated the... uh, what were they? What they call them? As, uh, the advisors. Observers? Yeah, but but was it, there? There seems to be a lot of evidence that in the months leading before his assassination, that he was he was trying to change that that policy and get us out of South Vietnam. You know, I don't know. I don't know whether that's true or not. And I know my father felt that if you are 
going to war, you go to war to win. And um, unfortunately, we tend to not adopt that policy when we commit American troops. And you don't advertise when you're going to leave either. Oh, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, sure, you don't do that. But yeah. my dad was not one that was reluctant to use military force uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, but he said, if you do, you know, don't hesitate. Go in there and kick ass and win the war and come home. Otherwise, don't bother. You know, there's a great, I think it's an, an Afghan saying, you have all the watches, we have all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know something, that is part of the problem. We, we wind, our, wind up getting ourselves involved around the world in cultures and languages and, and people that we have no knowledge about. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that's that. What you just said is true. Was true in Southeast Asia. They basically climbed up into the bleachers and just watched the Americans get slaughtered. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's, isn't it ironic that after fifty thousand Americans killed, we're now doing business with them. They're our good friends. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, and we wind up going and fighting in. Uh, parts of the world that we we don't even understand yeah and that's why i think our foreign policy ought to be drastically changed I, I totally and agree. that we ought to be doing more getting to know you type of work around the world uh i mean like the peace corps it was a good idea yeah. john f kennedy's Bar- barry hold on a second we're coming up against a hard break let's pick up there when you come back okay we'll Got be it. back we'll be back in a moment on taking care of business on current radio news talk 1180 